Hey everybody, Paul O'Flaherty here, Drive-By Marketing Podcast. Little sad today, this may be my last time recording a podcast in this office. Excited on the other hand, because that means new office. This place has done me well for the last two years or so. Time to move on. Um, What I did want to talk about today, though, most importantly, is I want to talk about email marketing. It's, you know, it's 2015. 2016 is rapidly approaching, and depending on who you talk to, you know, the future is Instagram, Snapchat, everything is social networks, and that's fine. That is absolutely 100% true, but what we cannot do is forget, allow ourselves to forget that we still need to have the fundamentals of marketing in place regardless of all of these other avenues, because they all have to work together. So email marketing, okay? For some people, that's very 2000. Some people think that, you know, we don't use our email anymore. Um, You know, we prefer IM, we prefer instant message. And, you know, if that's how you think, then frankly, you're wrong. Because email is everywhere. Right? More than 91% of all U.S. consumers use email every single day. And because of smartphones, we have an opportunity to reach people on their terms that really hasn't ever happened before in a means that pretty much no other app or service can match. 79% of people use their smartphones to read email, which means unlike other platforms that limit your ability to reach your audience, the only thing stopping us from engaging our customers is the quality of our content and the value we bring to our customers' lives through it. Take um, Microsoft's Outlook email app. I don't know how many of you have tried it. Uh, it's on iOS. It's on Android. It is, in my opinion the best email app that's out there for iOS or Android. However, I'm also the only person I know that actually uses it. That doesn't change the statistics. I can't talk today. That doesn't change the statistics, which is that Outlook on mobile is seeing more than 1.2 billion user sessions per month. And that one in five users adds more than one email account to the application. Think about that for a minute. Those are amazing numbers and an amazing opportunity for us to get in front of our customer base. And that's just one email app, right? That's not all the people who are using the default email app on Android or the default email app on iOS or um, any other platform that you care to matter. Mention. So when you use other platforms such as Twitter and Facebook, you mightn't realize it, but you're actually being artificially limited in how much of your audience you can reach at any given point in time. Twitter relies on your audience being there at the right time to see your message, or they'll miss it in the flow of their timeline, especially if, like most people, they're following more than just a handful of people. Facebook as everybody probably knows, especially if you've got a Facebook business page of any sort, the Facebook ranking system tends to impede people from seeing your posts. If you post something today, if I go to my Facebook page right now and post something, the chances are that typically less than 16% of your fan base will see the post. And the chances of the rest of your fan base seeing that post depend upon interaction with that 16%. Um, but it will never get up to the full 100%. If you want, really want to get action on Facebook, you got to start paying for it. Email, on the other hand, is constrained only by the quality of your content. It's c- constrained only by the catchiness of your subject and your ability not to land your emails in somebody's spam folder. So don't be spammy. Remember that email marketing is a long sell. No matter what your platform, consumers must be nurtured, they must be prodded and poked in the right direction, teased along to get where we want them to be. 
Typically, about 80% of customers do not buy on that first interaction. About 80% of customers will require multiple points of contact before they ever sign up, before they ever make that purchase, before they ever subscribe or do what it is you want them to do. And that number can range from anywhere between 5 to 12 points of contact before sales takes place. And that makes email the perfect platform for that kind of engagement. Because when I send an email and it sits in your email inbox, it's still there a couple of days later, a weeks later, whatever, depending on how heavy your email usage is, there's a lot bigger chance of it actually being opened or engaged with. Again, the only thing stopping that engagement is lack of user interest or spammy content. So take this away from today's podcast. Get yourself a MailChimp or a Constant Contact or uh, whatever other email service you want to use account. Plan out your content. Plan how you're going to drip feed your customers along. Are you going to move them from list to list? You know, how you're going to deal with long-term subscribers versus new-term subscribers. Keep them engaged by creating value in their lives, okay? Don't just send them the sell. Don't just be like, oh, look, I've got specials. Oh, look, I'm awesome. Oh, look, hire me. Do not do that. Do not be spammy. Create value. Solve a problem like we do with these podcasts here. Every single podcast is about a certain topic, and all we do is tell you how to take advantage of it or solve that problem. Do not resort to being spammy. Don't send buy this now emails. Just don't do it, okay? Let the quality of your content dictate their association with your product and your brand and your sales will come. 